All right, guys, welcome to another video. So this time we're going to be looking over the South African schools players' movements for the year 2019. So times have definitely changed, haven't they? I mean, to think that less than a decade ago, the Bulls were literally stockpiling talent left and right. Um, school players heading overseas were literally unheard of. And with the under-19 competition in scrapped of, in favor of a one-week festivals and unions not sort of having the same free spending ability, uh, the new generation of players sort of found it hard to get lucrative contracts that were once handed out freely. So where to for the class of 2019? So let's start locally, domestically. We'll start with the Blue Bulls. The Blue Bulls have managed to sign Reynard Roots from Gosfontein, decent player. Tian de Klerk from Monument. Uh, Stravino Jacobs from Poldrum, that's a big signing for them, great wing. And Ethan Theat from uh, Vintok Gymnasium. So not a lot of signings there, but... Uh, keep an eye on uh, De Klerk and Jacobs. I think Jacobs will add a lot to the Blue Bulls going forward. Um, then moving on to the Cheetahs. Uh, Gideon van Veek from Paul Boys. Very good signing. Nolan Pinar from Menlo Park. Also another great one. Then Camshin Moss and Warren Lowe from Fur Tracker. Sort of unknown quantities. Uh, then MJ Janssen from Rendsburg from Uffies. Uh, Zander de Toy from Help McCarr had a very good season this year, and then Talon Kotzer from Ierge Janssen. So, a bit of a mixed bag over there for them. Um, uh, basically, a very, very strong SA schools playing Gideon van Veek, but the rest of them, um, not particularly well known, but still they'll add some definite strength to the Cheetahs going forward. Uh, moving on to the Golden Lions, and uh, I mean, as always, they make some great signings. And uh, sort of keeping Henko von Veik was very important from there. That's a big signing. The New York Klaasens, he represented the Bulls this year, obviously moving over to the Lions. Uh, Spu Shongwe, great prop. Alistair Williams, uh, then Tyler Box and Quan Horn. So it seems like the Paul Boys uh, assembly line towards the Lions keeps on going. Uh, Baldwin Hansen, you remember the SA School's fly-off this year. Uh, Izan Esther Hazen, very good to retain him, the eighth man from Monument. Um, Manash Chawetsi from Sinsterians, then they got Siam Kulan Lovo from Northwood, who had a big season this year, and then finally you got Ngia Selengbe from Kez, uh, also another homegrown talent they've managed to retain. Moving on to the EP Kings, and uh, I think they've made some good signings. Uh, Tarkin Manuel is one of the standout players from Stellenberg. Uh, uh, great fullback, good year for him. And Suku I've I've really thought he's a very underrated player, and I'm very happy to see him signing with the Kings. And then uh, rounding off with Tian Suanapo and Tian Bots, uh, good players from Palm, Jim, and Halper Car, respectively. So good signings there for the Kings. Uh, definitely looking toward the future. Um, then moving on to the Sharks, uh, obviously a great fly half in Kian Meaden uh, from Paul Boys. Uh, then great, great signings, Jacques Hussel and Jared Taylor from Selborne. Um, these guys pretty much travel everywhere together, so very, very good signing there. Oki Barnard from Westville, local boys, as is Bladen uh, Golden from Glenwood. Uh, so good to retain those youngsters. And then obviously you've got Bapancella from Selborne. So three of the Selborne players from this year signing for the Sharks. Expect big things from all three of them. And then Western Province, not, not very active at all. They signed Bobby Alexander and Dylan Deleu from Paul Drum and Porus, respectively. Uh, let's call it quality over quantity. I mean, those are two top, top players. So very good signings for them. But uh, it just goes to show you that Western Province, in terms of financial uh, ability, don't have, have it anymore, so to speak. And then the Sevens Academy have uh, brought in three players. Uh, Ian Small Smith from Grey College. I mean, big fan of this player, you know, been speaking about him for a long time. Then Tian Pretorius, Paul Ruiz, very, very quick. And then Christian Smith from Ben Forster, another, another great player. Um, and then this is where it gets interesting, guys. Let's take a look at the overseas players. Uh, so, obviously, the one that everyone knows about, Kate Vol, he took going to Montpellier. Uh, as, and he'll be joined by Marcel Muller, Robbie Rogers, Le Leslie Buerta, and Sergio Moreira. Uh, so a lot of players going over to Montpellier. Then FC Duplessis uh, moving over to Toulon. Um, Zillinger Stradom and Werner Kreer um, from Gassontain and Afis, they're going to start a Francais. Uh, Danish Birkers from Grey College will also be going to Toulon. Um, and those are all the players that are heading to France. That's a significant number, guys. And you can expect it to go on like this for a long time. And then... Uh, Pierrich Sibbert, this is a very interesting one. He's got a scholarship to Risho University in Japan, so that's going to be very interesting going forward. Uh, then Alex Groves from St. John's moving to Bristol in England. Chris Poole from St. Andrews moving to Ulster in Ireland. I believe they both have EU uh, passports, uh, which made it quite easy for them to move over. 
Uh, you got Stale Barnard from Foot Tracker moving to Busy Years in France. And then finally, Jared Skip is from Gasfontein. He's going to be uh, attending university on a scholarship, I believe, in Australia. So in terms of my closing thoughts, just over 30 players were offered contracts by South African unions. At the end of 2018, the number was well over 100. So the process has started, guys. Rugby will become more globalized because of this, and I'm certain of it. I've been, I've been speaking about that for a lot this year. So in my opinion, it's up to sorry whether to see the glasses half empty or half full. Um, and I think what happens is that the more the public sector interferes, the more the private sector will sort of make a plan. So... Um, I think the, the answer is very clear and it's in front of us. Sorry, has got to look to privatize as much as possible because um, as a union and with government interference, um, it's only going to get worse or better depending on your perspective. It depends if we allow freedom of movement of players. But that is a lot of players to go overseas. Um, and it's, it, it feels like it just came out of nowhere. But it's been a long time coming. I'll tell you now, scrapping the under-19 competition has led to this. And I've agreed with scrapping the under-19 competition. It's just not financially feasible. But it's a video for another day to talk about the the sort of uh, gap between the under-19 and under-21 competitions, what ha what's happening with our school leavers. Anyway, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Let me know your thoughts and opinions uh, below. Um, obviously, don't forget to click subscribe. Um, and uh, have a great week further, as always. Cheers. Bye.